once you get your planning, get everything down, conditioned to right for your burn that you're wanting to do, again, now it's the time to go out and to ignite that growing season burn. And so what you're gonna do is again, the same techniques as you would even in dormant season, you're gonna wanna light a backfire. Uh, again, you don't need as much black or areas that you do in the dormant season. So we're gonna go ahead and light along the downwind side to create that, to help stop the fire, to help the fire breaks work, be more effective and do what they can do. So again, you can see we're lighting along the edge. Sometimes too, growing season burns, you gotta light a little bit slower just because you're trying to get that fuel down in there, that dormant fuel down in there to get it to start burning, get it going and walk it along through it. Again, the other thing is you can see growing season burns do produce a lot more smoke just because of the green and the and water vapor and stuff, more water vapor getting more out in there. So smoke along the downwind sides a lot more. So having to kind of patrol, but also making sure people stay out of a lot of smoke so they don't eat a whole lot of smoke. To do that, just keeping everybody safe, working along with it. Sometimes on depending on the size of the burn unit, you can burn it with different techniques. In this burn unit, we're gonna burn it with some strip head fires to help speed up the ignition so it'll burn a little quicker. So again, we're gonna run an initial torch along the downwind side edge and we're gonna move in just a little bit, run another strip along through there, and then we're gonna widen out, run another strip, just to create a bunch of smaller head fires that will hopefully increase the burn rate of this, make it burn quicker, make it burn better, and get this over with a lot quicker. Because again, a lot of times the growing season burns, they're, they're slow moving. They move really slow, but we can try to speed them up with different ignition techniques that we're using and utilizing. And then as you can see, uh, you know, we've got equipment there, everything on site, but most of the time you don't have to use a whole lot of equipment because there's just not as much risk involved and danger of it escaping or spotting like it, like it does during the dormant season just because of all the green fuel. Again, not saying you shouldn't. You gotta always be prepared for it. Again, same equipment, everything out there, but you know, the risk is a whole lot less. But the main thing is, is that yes, we have top killed it, we've done it. And now it's gonna start greening back up. Like I said, that, that burn you were in this morning, that was 11 days regrowth. So, you know, a lot of times I hear people talking about, especially dormant stuff, I don't wanna burn because I don't know if it's gonna rain or not. Okay? In the spring, you know, late winter, spring, okay? Well, for, for, for people making excuses of that, this answer is your excuse because we know how much rain we just had. Let's burn. We know it's wet. You know, we, again, we can't guarantee that it's going to rain tomorrow or it's going to rain even any more this month. But we know we're wet. We got better chances of stuff going to come back, right? This time of year. It definitely greens up really quick, you know, within in these growing season burns. I see, I see responses. I, I've gone in and had four inches of regrowth within seven days on sumac you know, and stuff, I mean, just stuff just responds rapidly. Because it's warm, soil's warm, air's warm, and you got moisture, and stuff's gonna respond. And so, yeah. John, something I hadn't heard anybody say today, and, and uh, my summer burns, even in the spring, are the first to green up. So it's like burning twice. You know, so right. I didn't hear that today, you might mention Yeah, we, we, we've done that, thank you. Jason, that's a good one. He's talking about his summer burns are the first to green up in the spring, even before a lot of his spring burns do. And that's right, because again, the, the soil's bare, it warms up quicker, things are going on with it. So we're gonna do it, a lot of times it is, and, and we've seen that on some stuff, and I don't think Laura talked about it with the cattle stuff on the forage quality, but we've actually seen stuff where we burned in August, you know, July, August time frame. Again, get a spike in crude protein, forage quality goes up, and again, it goes down over winter but then it goes right back up real high, just like you just burned it on that same spot in the spring. You don't get that with a spring burn. You only get a one-time shot with that. That's that year of the burn within that. So a lot of times our growing season burns are giving us two times the amount of higher quality forage for livestock or nutrition level for wildlife. With this fire, we can probably go around it in probably 30, 45 minutes. We'll be able to leave and and I'm probably, I'm actually, I'm not too worried about it. We got a good break on the north side. We're supposed to have south winds all evening long. So we're gonna be good. That's the other thing. Anytime you're burning, you need to, you know, a lot of times we spend a lot of time looking at the forecast for the day. Please be sure and look at your forecast for the next day and even the day after to see what it's gonna do. Because mm -hmm. sometimes you may have good weather to burn, but the next day the winds are gonna switch and be blowing 50 mile an hour. 
that's probably not a day that we need to burn because of what's coming tomorrow. So look at that. Don't just get caught up looking at the day that you're going to burn. Look and see what's going on. And that's the nice thing about growing season burns. What's our weather pattern right now besides wet? But it's consistent, isn't it? It's going to be really consistent. We don't have all, you know, we don't have a lot of fronts coming through, a lot of wind switches, a lot of that stuff going on like we do in the spring that we're constantly fighting. Summertime weather patterns are just a rubber stamp. You know, it's constant this temperature, this wind direction, and this. And the weatherman typically, when it's dry, they put a chance of rain at the end of the seven-day forecast just to make it feel good. 